These are seriously insane feats of Doom Eternal achievement. Let's talk about this right now. Toxic Death is doing a 4x damage run. Enemy has the quad on this arena here. And you can see that she sets up perfectly with the tyrants, knowing where they spawn and understanding what's going to happen. Just look at this movement here and, and how much damage one shot took. Nearly 100 armor. <laughs> and, and that's nothing compared with what is to come. You get ready for this. Now, I've actually done 3x damage runs before, uh, one of them, and I can speak from experience and say that it is hard. Your saving throw will not work. You will not get the brink of death low health warning. It's harder than it looks. Beautiful bunny hop setting up that D-blade. You know, the key here, we're not looking at insanely crazy sw quick switching as a priority. Ooh, bumped your head there. Now, the key is movement and survival. The chain gun shield, when you see her use it, comes up for a split second. You have to understand, remember, this damage is just deletes the chain gun shield. It becomes paper thin because of all damage it takes. Nice ballista boosting off the jump pads. You can see here that if you're not constantly moving on a quad, look, just like that. I'm just gonna rewind this a second. I just want you to see how fast that health dropped. Are you ready? Let's check this out here. Boom, two shots. Well, actually we did get the low health warning here, thankfully. You do not always get that, very fortunate. It will actually take you and do a death blow if you're not careful. So can't always spank on that. Good D-Blades here, really good setups to restack off of that Maker Drone. Have to nail those headshots because you don't have much time. Now let's see what happens next. Always, deep, always doing the boost off the jump pad, setting up the D-Blades. Keeping in the air is so important in the movement because the enemies get a little screwed up from your aerial movement. Beautiful, look at the punching, the punch deck here. Understanding how many D-Blades is this? And the reason I say that, look at that shield go. Typically, destroyer blades are risky moves. So you have to know what you're doing and be ready to set them up. This could be a fast D-Blade, what we're seeing here. Altogether, coming back around for the Cybermancubus on the GK. Saw that opportunity, had to get it because you can't just let that Cybermank go. I could have done a Precision Bolt or something, but it wouldn't have worked out as well because you're going away from it. Okay, trying to take out the Baron, dashing back just in time. Great use of the shield. You can't overuse the shield because if you do that, then you're not going to have it for the second later, which you need it. So you have to be careful and use it at the right time. Four seconds, so the shield should be back around now. Notice that the play is cautious, not always going extremely balls to the wall, trying to go make some kills, finding these openings and seeing the right time to jump in, given that movement is so key here okay there are a lot of things spawned over up in the rafter there set it up with a nice d blade that oh, good shield actually blood punch ooh, good flying blood punches and whiplashes are pretty nice i tend to use it but as you can see here lots of bunny hopping going on gotta dodge single dashes to get past those have to watch out for the hazards those may not seem deadly in normal play but when everything's multiplied by four they sure as heck are so what we're seeing here let's take a look all right so, uh, miss that ballista boost. So when you are in this situation with a Baron in your face, what do you do? You stay in the air and PB rocket it, lock on. So that chain gun shield coming in with the blood punches does seem to work well here. Again, you don't have much room. When you're cornered like this, it's perfect. When you're cornered like this, you really have to think about what you're gonna do next. So this is a really good run by Toxic here. It looks like it's a similar type of thing for the rest of the run. So let's go ahead and check out our next runner here. This is going to be Nairham. This is no HUD, Shield, Hammer, or BFG in the World Spear Master level. And the reason I wanted to highlight this one is because he uses some non-conventional play. Now, he does a lot of challenge runs and crazy different things here. Ooh, Cruciform. That actually, that hazard is like the Bloodmaker Cruciform, which is super deadly. Now, you watch here. You'll see him do, like I said, these non-conventional movements. He, oh, is he going to pull out the mobile turret? Is he going to do it? Uh, so this arena here, you actually need to have the possessed tyrants dead. Uh, killing the blood maker is nice as well. So let's see what he does as he restacks. Mobile turret to falter or stagger the imps to bring everything back. Look at that. Ice bomb into frags, flaming, and the mobile turret. Super thick THICC sounding gun right there. Setting up more D blades. I'm telling you what. Oh, that was a beautiful decapitation there. D-Blades are so good. They are a very high risk reward mechanic because you are slowed down. You have to be bunny hopping off of that. And speaking of bunny hopping, you should stick around to the end of the video. I, I won't spoil why. You should do that. And he's using these methods, trying to set up these openings. And, and that's really what it's about here. He is not trying to do insane quick switching right here. And if you're not a, a wild quick switcher, this should be a good video for you because it's showing you ways that you can be a top tier combat player 
but still utilize you know unconventional methods with the microwave beam and the blood punch you have to be careful when you're doing that especially in the samurai fight because you will break your beam when you go to that blood punch and the dread knight will definitely come after you got to keep it restacked with the no hud keep all of your cues in mind keep everything top of mind now he did the fodder kill to get the supercharged on the micro missiles unfortunately it did expire let's see if he does it again that's exactly it you can see by the micro missiles you the little difference there now, these are actually really good against possessed enemies. The MMs are, and also Doom Hunters too. So if you are a micro missile user, be sure to consider that when you're going against possessed enemies. Lock on and MM, two very good things. Uh, what's he doing here? Is he trying to set up for maybe like a glory kill? I'm not sure. So he, he's actually going back to remote debt. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what he's doing here, Try what he's going to set up. So let's move over here a little bit. I think it's a D-Blade. Yeah, I think it's a D-Blade. Let's skip ahead just here to our next section. Ooh, he's getting right up in the tyrant's face. Going in, flame, and then the GK. Now, the next section here, you got to check this out. Once the tyrants have fallen, you know, we got the Bloodmaker 2. He does really well in this part of the arena because this is the donut room right here. You don't have really any meat hook nodes. It's low ceiling. So he's finding ways to get rid of these Doom Hunters first before he goes to the Marauder. Saw mobile turret there for a second. No shield, remember. And he's got to use a lot of ballista boosting with quick turnarounds to just pop back to different areas of the arena. Now, remember, notice his focus isn't on mad quick switching to try to get out the most DPS he can. And where a lot of people go wrong is that they get in the zone to where they do the fastest quick switching they can. They get out of rhythm, which screws them up. And then they focus so much on that that they end up getting hit a lot because their movement suffers because their whole brain is focused on quick switching. Good mobile turret to top off that Doom Hunter there. Waiting till he leaves that invulnerability window. Coming in for the freeze on both Hunters and the Blood Punch right there. Keep seeing the mod switching too. He's doing very well at coming at the lock on. See, he knows that that lock on, on top of everything else, puts that Hunter into the stagger state. He still hasn't really touched the Marauder much, keeping the dog at bay as he needs. Ouch. All right, so the biggest takeaways I can see here are his movement is just the ballista boosting, focusing on that, trying to stay alive, constantly going in circles, no shield to fall back on, no supers or hammer. Oh, wait for this part. Wait for this. Keeping stacked up on those zombies that continually spawn. Armor's going to stay on the ground for like 20 seconds. He knows that, hey, if I have that there, I can swing by and pick it up. As movement is a little rough here. Oh, it's the full auto. He's known for doing full auto on crazy challenge runs. I think he's going to pull it out here. Remember, this is ultra nightmare that he's bringing out the full auto on the end. I don't know if it's for the memes or what, but either way, it ends up working out very well in his case. Now, you remember when I told you we were going to check out some bunny hopping? You got to see this. This is beautiful. And I just want to point out real quick that B-Hop IRL, look at his top right hand corner. Well, you can't see it because of me, but I'm going to pull my camera down so you can see his frames per second up in the top of the screen. He does not have high FPS, and look what he can pull off. Boom, one. let's count him, let's count him, ready? Off the jump pad, over with the ballista boost. One, bunny hop, misses the monkey bar. Two, coming down for number three, still going in a circle. Four, cut the tyrant down. Look at the, oh, his head's flopping out. That is too cool right there, all with low FPS, showing that it can be done. Maybe it's mouse wheel, I don't know, it's beautiful. Check out all these channels in the description, subscribe to any of them, on all of them, if you like what they brought to the table here today, check out my next video here. I'm Alston. Thank you for watching.